Dynamic dashboards can give you a real-time insight and help you track key metrics in a glance. In today's video, we're going to dive into creating a dynamic dashboard in Google Sheets. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to the 101 library. Before you jump into creating your dashboard, it's important to spend some time planning your dashboard. Here are a few tips to help you get started. First, identify your key metrics. What are the most important numbers or data points you need to track? What you want to monitor will guide you the entire design process. Second, know your audience. Who will be using your dashboard? Is it for your personal use, your team, or higher management? Understanding your audience will help you decide how to present your data. Finally, organize your data. Gather all the data you need in one place and think about how you structure it. Next up, let's create some visuals and plots to use in your dashboard. Choosing the right visuals is a key to an effective dashboard. Here are some quick tips about some of the most common visuals. First, bar charts. These are great for comparing data such as sales targets against actual sales. To create a bar chart, first, have your data organized in a sheet in this similar format. The first row would represent the titles for each column. Then, hit the insert, choose chart. And this will insert a new chart. The first thing to do is to go to chart type and choose your chart type. In this case, we're looking to add a bar chart. You have three options over here. I'll use the first one. After, we have to select our data range. Click on this icon over here and select all the data in this table. Once selected, click OK and your data is added. Notice that Google Sheets will create some charts automatically. We will change these. Head to the Y axis and click on these three dots over here and choose Remove. Additionally, we will remove all these series. Now the first thing to do is to choose the Y axis for the bar chart. I'll click on this here and for my Y axis I'll choose month. Then you will have to add some series. In this case I will add the actual sales and my sales targets. Finally I will click on aggregate to sum up the data for each month. And as you can see this bar chart will compare my actual sales to the sales targets. I will also choose to change the colors of these bars. Click on these bars and this will move you to the Customize tab. Under the Customize tab, I'll choose a different fill color for my bar. In this case, I'll choose a green color. Additionally, I will click on the red and I will change that as well. After you choose the colors you like, I'll click and drag this chart away. The second common visual you can create is the line chart. These charts are perfect for showing trends over time, like monthly revenue or customer satisfaction scores. To add that chart, click on insert, choose chart, and for the chart type, I will choose align chart. You have few options, I will choose the first one. After, you will have to select your data. Click on this icon and select the data in your table. Click OK and this will add your data. Again, I will remove all my x-axis and series from this chart. For this chart, I'll choose to plot my revenue across each month. To do so, for my x-axis, I will choose month and then for my series, I will choose revenue. I'll click on aggregate to add all that data and I'll remove the product. And as you can see, my revenue is plotted. However, I want my plot to focus more on this area. To do so, Click on your Y axis and for a minimum value, I'll change this to about 100,000. And this will zoom into my data more effectively. And as you can see, this plot will show that February was the month with the highest revenue. I'll change my line to be a little bit more thicker and a different color. Click on the line and then for the line color, I'll choose the green and for the thickness, I'll choose 8. I will also choose to add a chart title. Click on charts and titles. And for the chart title, I'll type revenue. And for that, I'll choose the text color to be yellow. Another common visual that you can create is a pie chart. Pie charts are ideal for illustrating proportions 
such as the share of total sales by product. To add that chart, click on insert, choose chart, and this will add a new chart. For the chart type, choose a pie chart, I'll choose the donut type, and then for my data range, I'll click on this icon and select my table, click OK. Then for my labels, I'll choose product and for my value, I'll choose actual sales. I'll click on aggregate to add the data. And as you can see, this chart will show me the percentage of sales for each product. I will change these colors slightly. I'll click on the blue and for my color, I'll choose green. I'll keep the other two colors as they are. I'll also choose to add a chart title and I'll type total sales by product. I'll choose a yellow color and my chart is created. The final common visual chart that we will create today is the GeoMaps. If you're working with location data, like in our example, GeoMaps provide you an intuitive way to visualize performance across different states or regions. To add a GeoMap, click on Insert, click on Chart, and for your chart type, choose a GeoMap. Then for my data range, I'll select this icon, select my table, and click OK. And then I'll choose my region to be the state, I'll click on Aggregate, for my color, I'll choose Profit. And since my data only displays US data, I'll change this map to show the US map. To do this, click on Customize, choose Geo, and then for my region, I'll choose the United States. And instead of this red color, I'll change it to yellow, where yellow will represent the minimum profitable state. And after that, all my charts are complete. The next step is to design the layout of the dashboard. To do this, Start by adding a new sheet. Next, let's create our dashboard structure. To do this, we will break down the dashboard into sections. For instance, you might have a section for the title at the top, followed by detailed charts and tables below. To create sections, I like to merge all the cells that represent the section together. To do this, highlight your section cells, click to format, go to merge cells, Click on Merge All, and this will create my first section. Next, similarly, I will create all the other sections for my dashboard. I will fast forward through these. After I have all my sections merged, I'll select them all and I'll change the fill color to this color. Next, we will start adding information and data to our dashboard. In the first section, I will add a title. To do this, I'll simply type my dashboard title. In this case, it will be Sales Dashboard 2024. I'll format this cell by first increasing the size to 60. I'll make it bold. I'll change the font. I'll reduce the size a little bit. Goodness the center and I'll add some space and then I'll change the color to green. Next, I'll have three sections for my number of transactions, total profit, and total sales. To do this, in the first section, I'll type number of transactions, I'll type total profit here, and total sales. I'll highlight all these sections. Increase the font, make it bold, change my font, change my color, I'll remove the bold, I'll center it on the cell, and that looks good. Then, for my number of transactions, I want this to be dynamic. To do this, we'll have this cell formatted as a formula. Click on the cell and start by hitting equal and type sum. Choose the sum function, then head to your data sheet and you choose the column that has the actual sales to be summed. Click enter and this formula will calculate the total number of transactions in that column. Do the same thing for total profit and total sales. I'll fast forward over this.
Now we will have to reformat these three cells. I'll select them all, then I'll increase the font to something like 60. I'll choose the impact font. I'll center these on the cells, change the color to green. And for these two cells, these amounts are in dollars. So I'll highlight these and click on the dollar sign. This looks good. Next, I'll be adding my charts over here. Head back to the data tab, choose your first chart and click on Ctrl X. Go to the dashboard and in your first section, click on Ctrl V and this will add your first figure. Now click on these three dots and click on edit chart. Go to customize, click on chart style and for the background color, I'll choose none. And similarly, I'll do the same thing for the chart border color. After, I'll resize my chart and this looks good. I'll do the same thing for the other two charts. And all my three charts are added. Last, I'll add my GU chart. Go back to data. Click on that chart, Ctrl X again, head back to the dashboard, and Ctrl V, then resize this chart similarly. And this looks good. The last step is to hide all the other cells that are not used. First, let's start with hiding the columns. Click on the W column. Then hit Ctrl Shift and the right arrow key and this will select all the columns next to the W column on the right. Right click and choose hide columns. Similarly, I'll do that for all my unused rows. Click on row 39, Ctrl Shift down and right click, choose hide rows. And this will hide all my other rows. The next step is to test and refine your dashboard. Once you've built your dashboard, don't stop there. Test it with real data to ensure it works as expected. For instance, I'll head back to data and I will add another row that represents some data for April. I'll head back to my dashboard and as you can see, my data had updated automatically include some April data. However, as you can see from my line chart, the April data is very low that it's not shown. I'll reselect this chart, I'll click on edit, then I'll select my y-axis and I'll remove this minimum value. This way, my chart will update automatically based on my sales figure and will always include data as low as it can be. And there you have it. A dynamic interactive dashboard in Google Sheets that's ready to provide you with the insight you need. Remember, the key to a great dashboard is planning, choosing the right visuals, and making it user-friendly. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update from the 101 library. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.